Can we start? Yes, please. Good morning, midday and evening, dear trash hackers from around the world. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate your trash hacks, to get inspired and to call for change. My name is Julie Saito, and I'm the international coordinator of the UNESCO Associated Schools Network. Before we get started, let me briefly set out the housekeeping rules. We have simultaneous interpretation to French and Spanish. You can switch channels by clicking on the globe sign. Please type any questions you may have into the Q&A box. You can upvote questions that have been submitted by clicking on the like button on the question. We also have a chat function open, which you may use to say hello or to put additional reflections. We are recording this session and we'll share it with you afterwards. I would now like to give the floor to the director of UNESCO's Division for Peace and Sustainable Development, Ms. Vivike Johnson, to open today's event. Vivike, the floor, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie, and um, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all of you who are joining us from around the world. At the end of January, UNESCO launched the Trust Hack Teachers Guide and Global Campaign alongside the Foundation for Environmental Education. And since then, the launch event has been watched 6,000 times. The Teacher's Guide, now available in English, French, and Spanish, has been consulted over 5,000 times. We have received trash hacks from <clears throat> over 500 schools from 60 countries. And thousands of students around the world have been busy learning about our planet, rethinking waste, and taking action to hack the trash around them. Today, we have invited students and teachers from each of the five regions to share just a few of the many excellent trash hacks that we have received over the last three months. You can find many more on the Trash Hack website and on social media through hashtag Trash Hack with hundreds of inspiring images and videos from boys and girls who care about the planet and have taken actions to make their lives, homes, communities, and schools more sustainable. It has been warming to see the students from preschool to their final years of high school observe their local issues when it comes to waste, taking action, and reflecting upon how their local situation fits into global waste systems, and celebrate what they have learned and achieved for each other and the world through the Trash Hack website and Young Reporters for the Environment competition. This campaign has demonstrated the genuine global enthusiasm for education for sustainable development. When given the opportunity to learn by positive action for the planet, young people in all regions have shown interest, passion, and ingenuity. Education for sustainable development empowers learners of all ages with knowledge, the skills, the values, and attitude to be change makers ready for the challenges of today and the future. In under a week, we will have the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development, a three-day virtual event attended by education leaders and stakeholders from around the world. We will share your passion with policymakers, calling, calling upon them to transform education so that every student in every classroom and community at any age can be learning for our planet and acting for sustainability through programs like Trash Hack. We would like to thank Japan for your generous support to UNESCO and for the initiative in calling uh, this campaign and the ongoing commitment to education for sustainable development. We invite schools to be inspired by the Trash Hacks they hear at today's webinar, download the teacher's guide, and continue to learn by action and share their achievements via the uh, uh, tra uh, hashtag trash hack and on the trash hack website. 
These small actions for our planet will change the way thousands of young people think about waste. They will carry these ideas, skills, and actions throughout their lives and spread to their families and communities, multiplying the impact and being part of a wave of change necessary for the future of our planet. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Vivike, for your inspiring opening remarks. I would like to join Vivike to thank you and to congratulate for your outstanding engagement and look forward to the discussions today. Let me now give the floor to Mr. Yoshiaki Ishida, Deputy Secretary General of the Japanese National Commission for UNESCO, and thanks to whose support um, we have been able to do this project. Mr. Uh, Ishida, my sincere gratitude goes to you and next colleagues in Japan. And now, please, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, thank you for kind introduction. I'm Yoshiaki Ishida, Director for International Strategic Planning Ministry of Education, as well as a Deputy Secretary General of the Japanese National Commission of UNESCO. On behalf of our ministry and also Japanese National Commission, I would like to congratulate on the progress of the trash hack actions at school level through broad network of the ASP net. And I extend a warm welcome to all, uh, all the participants today. And I would like to express my deep gratitude to colleagues in the UNESCO Secretariat, especially for the ASP net section and ESD section for the hard work on this campaign. As a donor of the, uh, this trash hack campaign on ESD, we are very happy to hear that many people around the world have been participated in this campaign and will share good practices today. Since the waste program problem is a good example of the typical sustainability issues to learn complexity, diversity, and the interactivity of sustainability issues with the participation of the Trash Hub campaign. So I believe that students and the teachers, as well as families and the people in communities, had opportunity to think about global challenges and the sustainable development from the point of Trash Hub. And through the campaign, we had not only experienced that learning global challenges, but also considered what we can do and transport our actions toward building a sustainable community, sustainable society, and a sustainable world. Even each action seems to be a tiny change, but for sure it will change the world if we can mobilize collective efforts from every one of you. From this perspective, ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, is significant to build a sustainable society. And as we may know, ESD has been promoted since 2005 with the initiative of the United Nations Ticket of ESD. And the Global Action Program on ESD from 2015. From last year, ESD for 2030 has been launched, and next week, World Conference on ES Education for Sustainable Development will be held. For the future of our planet, promoting ESD is crucial, and Japan continues to support this global initiative. And I hope people who start and participated in the Trash Hack campaign will continue and further develop your action, your action for our sustainable society. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a fruitful event. Thank you, Mr. Ishida, for your wonderful welcoming words. Dear participants, for those who may have joined us uh, a few minutes late, please find the housekeeping guidelines once more in the chat, which give important information regarding how you can switch to another language or submit your questions. We will now play a short video 
that we have been putting together to show the global trash hack action that has been taking place. Eric, please stop the video. nuevos y sencillos métodos para ser ecológicamente responsables y hacer nuestro planeta un lugar un poquito mejor. Composting is the process of taking waste material and reusing it to make something new. How many of you know in 2015 we need three planets like Earth? Asking the girls in the school to bring their uniforms in good conditions that no longer fit well to them. Next, we clean, fix, and sell them. In addition, the funds collected will be for our campaign data. Julie, your microphone is muted. So now you already saw some glimpses of what is awaiting us in today's event. But before I briefly take you through the program, let's have some fun and do a quick mentee. I want you to um, know where you are from today. And I'm sure you also want to know this. So um, please tell us by responding to the mentee. Uh, to participate, you can hold your phone, phone camera, over the QR code or click on the link shown on the slide. We have also posted the link in the chat. So while you are responding, let me take you through the program. In the next session, we will give the floor to schools from around the world who picked up on our global call to action in January and who have been trash hacking their schools, homes and communities. We will have the great opportunity to meet teachers and, te uh, teachers and students from Ghana, Bahrain, India, Portugal and Mexico. We will present their trash hacks and our moderators will also have some questions for them so that we can learn from their experiences and get inspired. We will then have 
a session on why we want to hashtag learn from our planet. For this, we will invite you to send us your inputs again via Menti. Please feel free to already respond to it now or at some point during the event. We copied all details in the chat for you. Your ideas will be presented to policymakers at the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development, which will take place next week in Berlin. Now let's go back to the mandate and see the countries who are participating today. I see the largest first Spain, Turkey, Portugal, India, Brazil, Germany, and so on. Lebanon. Thank you very much. So many, many countries presented today. I'm very happy to see all of you here. We will see how we have quite a few lined up as panelists as well. And now uh, let's hear from some of the students and teachers and let us start our journey in Bahrain. I would like to invite my colleague Katia to moderate the session. Katia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Julie. And a warm welcome to all of you also from my side today. My name is Katja. I work in the unit for ASPNET at UNESCO headquarters. Um, and I have the honor today to introduce you to Ms. Huda Labib and Mr. Mohamed Al Gosaibi from Ibn Kulon International School in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Um, Huda and Mohamed, could you please um, introduce yourselves and very briefly also state why you decided to participate in the global call to trash hack? Okay. Hi, my name is Huda Labib. I am a socialist uh, studies teacher. I am also the school UNESCO project coordinator and the Go Green Club leader in the middle school. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Aspenet UNESCO team for choosing uh, Ibn Khaldun National School to participate in this, in this webinar. Uh, we are privileged and honored to share our students' experiences uh, with other schools from all around the world and learn from their experiences as well. So, um, hello, my name is Hamal Iksaibi from the Kingdom of Bahrain. I'm an eighth grade student and a member of the IKNS Middle School Go Green Club. I believe that when students learn a sustainable and eco-friendly environment, it will, it will set them up for a sustainable future. I personally want to give back to Mother Earth and contribute to the efforts of other people, of others to help it become a better place for the generations to come. Thank you, Huda and Mohammed. It's really such a pleasure to have you with us today and to share your learnings and your trash hacks. You prepared a really wonderful video um, that capture your activities um, and I'm sure participants would love to see it. Um, so Eric, could you please click play? Thank you. Water is crucial to us, especially that we live on an island, Bahrain. Older generations depended on pearl diving and fishing as a source of income. The Bahraini seawater is known to be rich with diverse marine life. Seafood was a main ingredient in traditional Bahraini locals' diets. Accordingly, we, the Go Green team, a group of friends, aim to spread awareness about preserving marine life from plastic pollution. This coincides with the 14th Sustainable Development Goal, Life Below Water. To reach a larger audience and support our activities, we decided to start an Instagram account. To get the students into the spirit of Aqua Week, they were told to wear blue clothes on the first day and uh, to put their backgrounds to the sea in their virtual classes. To make the week even more fun, we started a competition between students to tell us the stories about their trash hack. In the English and Social Studies classes, students uh, had discussions, watched videos and presentations to do with the topic. The students also illustrated creative drawings in which they expressed their feelings towards the environment and uh, recommended solutions in which this problem could be solved. The drawings were shown in English class and were discussed by the students. 
We have many projects inside the school which help contribute to preserving the environment. One of them is our sustainable greenhouse. It is an educational garden used as a learning tool for school students. The greenhouse is fully powered by photovoltaic solar panels and uses modern agricultural technology such as aquaponics and hydroponics to save the irrigation water. Bahrain is a region praised for its high solar energy, so we decided to take advantage of this. We did this by fixing solar panels above the school buildings as well as the teacher's car park. So we obtained the clean electrical energy. Middle school students recycle natural waste from their leftover fruits to create the compost soil that's used in the sustainable greenhouse and in the school gardens. We reuse the drainage water from our swimming pool and the water produced by our air conditioners, filters it, and then it is used to irrigate the plants. Inside classrooms and in main corridors, there are many recycling bins to make it easier for students to put waste into three categories, paper, plastic, and general waste. The waste is then put into large containers in the backyard of the school. The money generated is then donated to Foundation in Bahrain that helps with it. Wow, what a, what a great video and insight into your context in Bahrain. Um, it's really impressive to see what you've been doing in the Aqua Week, but also what you've been doing beyond. I have several questions for you, but um, let's maybe start with the first one to Huda. Um, Huda, what would you say are your key learnings um, uh, or participants' key learnings that engaged in the Aqua Week? Huda, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. It's never too late to act. Our oceans are at the limit of their resilience. Overfishing, pollution, acidification, among many other human activities, are pushing our oceans to the brink of collapse. During the last uh, 100 years, many environmental uh, changes have happened. Yet the natural world is resilient. Great riches still remain. And the planet can still recover if we act responsibly. Creating awareness among students about, for example, the dangers of plastic waste to marine life is the first step towards reducing the use of plastic and actively searching for environmentally friendly alternatives. Mm. Thank you, Huda, for these important messages um, and learnings. Um, what would you say is your personal key insight maybe or learning that you, that you take from the Aqua Week? Okay, my sense of compassion and responsibility toward the environment definitely increased. The more I read and research about the topic, the more aware I become about the dangers that lay ahead. I started realizing that the simple um, action matter. I started feeling guilty if I throw any plastic bottle in the trash. So I reduced the use of plastic to a minimum. Now I use a reusable drinking bottle I don't use straws anymore. Uh, I use uh, biodegradable grocery bags. These are simple changes, but if we all do them, they will make a big impact. Yeah, thank you, Huda, for sharing this insight. I really like how you managed to transform that feeling of guilt that you mentioned. And I think that we have, well, that all of us have really, when we think about our own lifestyle and impact that it has on the environment, and how you really transform that into something more positive by taking action and, and by also seeing the bigger picture. Um, now, maybe a question to you, Mohammed. Um, what did, do you appreciate particularly in the Aqua Week? And maybe also what was your key insight? So yeah, Aqua Week made me and my fellow classmates reflect on our actions and think of better ways to be more sustainable. I appreciate how students discussed and acknowledged the problems our oceans suffer from and how they suggested solutions. Great, and just in terms of the suggested solutions that you mentioned, what maybe struck you in particular to save our oceans? Could you maybe give us an example? Yeah, definitely. So I was impressed by many of the ideas suggested by my classmates. I realized that this is a problem cannot be solved in one single way. I personally lacked an array of suggested solutions, like installing trash skimmers in marinas and next to beaches, building recycling facilities, 
to recycle waste into valuable resources and, apply, and even applying single-use plastic tax. But most importantly, we as individuals must learn not to trash Mother Earth first before thinking about ways to clean our trash. Great, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, I would like to also just come back one second to the video that you showed where you showed the activities that you were doing through Aqua Week, but we could also see that you're doing a lot more um, than that in your school. Um, and I feel there's a clear uh, drive towards a whole school approach to education for sustainable development. So going beyond teaching and learning, but also um, yeah, infusing it in, in school governance and facilities and operations and in, in community engagement. Um, Huda, I would be curious to hear a little bit more about um, why your school chose to go for a whole school approach and how this has been working out for you. We can't uh, make or in, implement all these activities without supporting. So the school administration supports the activity uh, of the Go Green Club. Anything we need, if they can do it, they do it. It also, the, uh, the, the administration also supports uh, the association of the school with UNESCO. Uh, the school is not a bubble that shields the students from the world. The school structure must be designed to allow the students to deal with real world issues. Uh, this includes the educational program offered um, at the school, as well as the activities that go alongside the educational programs. Teaching about sustainability shouldn't be the responsibility of the science teacher alone. While the science teacher uh, can address it from uh, a science perspective, other subject teachers can also address it from their own disciplines perspective. Um, they are um, implications to sustainability that impact our social lives that students can discuss in social studies classes. Uh, students can creatively write about uh, these issues as part of their language and mathematics classes. They can also express their thoughts through uh, drawing, dance, uh, and music. Tackling this uh, issue from different angles gives students a deeper understanding of it and how it relates to their own lives. Thank you so much, Huda. Um, it's yeah, really uh, interesting to see what you feel are some of these ingredients, school leadership, teacher autonomy, um, taking a multidisciplinary approach, um, yeah, this creative and real world um, engagement in the learning. I think that's wonderful. Um, and now maybe just a quick question um, to Mohammed uh, before we wrap up. Um, Mohammed, you're really lucky to go to such a great school. Um, I, I'm curious, outside of school, do you also um, talk to your friends about sustainability issues that you learn about in your school? And uh, maybe what are some of the issues you talk about? So yes, my friends and I discuss solutions to help improve the state of the planet. We talk about how we can reuse and recycle. I believe that Bahrain could capitalize on sustainable energy and specifically solar energy because we live in the Middle East and we get a lot of sunlight. Our school has installed many solar panels and I hope all schools and facilities in the kingdom do the same thing. Super. Um, and now one last question to both of you before we pass the ball to the next panel. Um, and this is related to the messages to policymakers. Why do you both love learning for our planet? And what do you feel would need to change in your school or generally in, educa in, in the education system to make space for it, to make it more effective? Maybe first this time Mohammed and, and then Huda. Okay, definitely. As a student, I feel responsible to discuss and raise awareness among my fellow students. Because if we don't act anytime soon, the plans will reach a very serious stage and that will risk the extinction of many animals. The first time I heard of sustainable development, I was intrigued. And after research, I started implementing it on my own life. IKNS has put a lot of effort into teaching children these goals. And I suggest that our school incorporate more field trips to farms, nature reserves, and plant nurseries to get the students engaged in the beautiful environment of Bahrain and our planet. I enjoyed learning about our planet because Mother Earth is my home and it's the home uh, of my children and grandchildren. God gave us beautiful oceans, mountains and stunning landscapes and every creature has 
a role to play within it. It's our duty uh, to do our best to preserve Mother Earth's natural balance for the betterment of life and uh, for all creatures. At the policy making level, I suggest that educational policy makers start thinking of ways of designing the curricula with sustainability in its wider sense as a frame for teaching and learning. This is most suitable in elementary education, where there is one teacher teaching several subjects. Teachers' training programs could be developed accordingly. Great. Thank you, Huda and Mohammed, for these important messages. We'll make sure to take them with us to the Berlin conference next week. Um, and with that, I'll pass back the ball to Julie and for the next panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Huda and Mohammed. Um, very, very inspiring uh, presentation of the Aqua Week. Um, it's in truly, um, it's not just a uh, uh, it's about the waste management uh, for our water oceans, but also it's for the very uh, wider sustainability issues uh, through um, a profound learning, but also enjoying at the same time. So uh, very, very inspiring. And I would like to congratulate, congratulate you on your impressive work on a whole school approach. Uh, this is truly what we would also like to, um, to see schools around the world to uh, replicate. Thank you very much. Now let's uh, move to the next session. Um, but before we do so, I uh, would like to uh, just show you this reference here um, of our ASP.NET guide on the whole school approach to climate change. It is a, a great reference and a resource for any school to get started. And on our website, you can download the guide and also uh, watch a short trailer and documentary on how ASPNet schools from 25 countries across the world implemented it. Uh, let's now go to Ghana. Uh, I would like to invite my colleague uh, Pramod from the Foundation for Environmental Education to take the floor. Pramod. The floor is yours. Thank you, Julie. I'm uh, delighted to be here. I'm Pramod. I work as Senior Director of Education at Foundation for Environmental uh, Education. And on behalf of Foundation for Environmental Education, I would like to thank UNESCO for organizing this uh, Trash Hack campaign. All the three programs of the Foundation, Eco Schools, the Young Reporters for Environment and Learning About Forest participated in this positive solution-based action as part of the Trash Hack. And I'm happy to have Sedan Kaudu, from, who is a head teacher from St. K. Michael School from Akara, Ghana. It is one of our eco schools. Sedan, could you please introduce yourself and give the context of the sustainability in which you work? All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sedan Kaudu Giriklo. Um, I'm the headmaster for St. K. Michael School in Accra, Ghana. It's actually a pleasure to be on this platform to share ideas on how we can all protect our, our planet Earth. Um, we have been, as a school, we've been part of the Echo School Club for about well, three to four years now. And we, we've, we've engaged in a number of activities. For instance, we've engaged in uh, recycling, waste management, and entry planting. Now, in terms of our local um, community and then the issues that we have, one of the major issues that we find ourselves in is uh, waste management issues, especially uh, indiscriminate despair, disposal of uh, we, uh, plastic waste especially. So we, we feel that uh, if, if we are to take part in any activity, the best approach would be to tackle uh, waste management and recycling as, as an activity, yes. Thank you, Sedem. And uh, I understand uh, Ghana, as in many countries around the world, is facing the problem of uh, plastic disposal. And when the systems are lacking uh, and they're uh, not as uh, uh, big as or better as in many parts of the developed countries, uh, it's important that we have good behaviors where we can segregate and share those actions. And uh, 
I would like also to understand uh, that what uh, solution you worked upon uh, with your students and then what were the learning that you observed as both as a teacher and as also an, an head teacher who is running an institution? Okay, thank you, Pam Power. Um, for, for us, what we worked on was, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we looked at uh, recycling. So we realized that in now specifically in our preschool department, almost every day they bring a lot of uh, juice boxes to drink uh, during their lunch break. So, and it's actually, it takes a lot of our, of our, of our waste. So we decided to recycle uh, the, juice, the juice boxes into, into another uh, uh, that's been for the student to collect. So as you can see on the screen, we have uh, the juice boxes put together. What we did was that we got our preschool students who are between the ages of three to five years to deposit the juice box in a particular station. And then the eco school members uh, decided to go for them and then put it together in order to create another uh, dustbin, which was uh, put in a classroom for them to use in separation of waste. Now, uh, in terms of uh, major learnings from this, for me as, as a head teacher of an institution, looking at the children, seeing how they collaborated, they came together, brainstormed, it was very satisfying as an educator. It was very satisfying to see that our children are, are very capable of, of thinking on their feet. Because what we did was that the teachers did not actually I say so much in doing this. If the student came up with the ideas, they look at the situation in the school, came up with the ideas, and even how to put everything together. So it was very satisfying. And then for uh, for our students, the, the, the learning they got from it is, is that, especially our preschool, when they uh, put the, the, the juice box in a particular station and seeing the end product, they were really excited. And then they all be, they, they both for me is that waste is actually not waste, but then waste can also be a, a resource as we, we have now. So these are some of the major learnings that we, we got from this particular activity. Yeah. Thank you, Sajam. Um, and I think it's an important uh, circularity thinking, what we call in terms of circular economy, extending the life of a product and not considering anything as waste. And that's the core principle of circularity or circular economy we are not talking about around the world, that how to reduce or minimize or eliminate waste. And congratulations for uh, leading that, this and giving this example to us. And the Thank important part, I, uh, the important part you also highlight, which is the core of eco-school program is that it's a pedagogy or the process, which is of, of importance or strengthen. And the ESD skills that you talked about or competencies in terms of collaboration, critical thinking, even the belief uh, in solution and uh, looking forward at systemic thinking that what we can do or and, uh, having an anticipatory thinking and being solution uh, oriented, which is a core element of or core principle of education at the foundation. And uh, would like to understand now, uh, as any, any eco school, uh, this is not an event. This is a regular activity that we do uh, year after year. So what are your plans for the future? Where you're thinking that uh, uh, you will be going uh, with this success and uh, how you will be continuing uh, your actions uh, or your positive actions, what we call handprint at fee also? Yes, as you said, this is not one of thing for school school. It's something that we do every day. So now what we, we are doing currently is that it's more of an in-school thing. So. Our plan is to be able to get into the community where we find ourselves. But it's important for us to first of all educate our children. And we believe that whilst we educate our children, they get a grip of this uh, recycling uh, habit and all of that. They can in turn educate their parents, and the parents on a on a larger scale educate the community. So our main focus for the future is to look at getting our community also involved in this activity and that, that, that will make us very proud at the end of the day yes Thank you, Sajam. I think you highlighted yeah. and uh, you summed up very well that education is an important tool uh, to shape the future and also the influence uh, that we can have on the society. And in eco school, that is one important aspect that how do we connect with the problems in the society and use that as an approach or as an integral way to learn about sustainability and take actions. Thank you, Sajam, for your uh, trash hack and look forward to your actions and other actions from Ghana and would like to thank uh, the Eco School network from around the world that participated in the campaign. And uh, now I pass on the 
floor back to Julie. Thank you, Pramod, uh, for giving us the nice examples of eco schools. And then in particular, of course, as uh, said, um, it's a great presentation that uh, we learned so much about how teachers can also encourage uh, uh, their te uh, students to come up with their ideas uh, for the sustainable issues. Um, it's very, very inspiring. Thank you so much. Um, our next panel slot takes us to uh, Portugal, and we will hear about trash hacks from two schools. I pass the floor to my colleague, Lily, who will be moderating this panel slot. Lily, please. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Julie. Uh, my name is Lily and I'm from UNESCO's section of Education Sustainable Development. Now, we had so many amazing contributions from all around Europe, but we wanted to focus today on some of the excellent and diverse trash hacks we saw in Portugal. Firstly, we go to Sandra, Matilde and Josefina from Agropimento de Escola de Bemposa. Hi all, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yes, uh, sure. So, hi, my name is Justina. I'm 12 years old. I go, I'm here from Portugal. I go to the school from Ebesta de Costa and I'm going, I'm at a special class, a music class where we all play an instrument and I play a classical instrument. Uh, it's called viola, it's similar to violin. Hi, my name is Matilde, I'm 12 years old. Uh, my school is Cerveza de Imposta. I'm her classmate and I play guitar. And hi everyone, I'm Sandra, I'm the teacher, I'm geography and citizenship teacher. We are in the south of Portugal and we are representing a group of 11 schools. Fantastic, thank you all. Um, now, for your trash hack, you did something a little bit interesting that went across boundaries. Sandra, do you want to present your trash hack to us? And while Eric plays a little video on the screen. Okay. Um, we are a UNESCO school from um, uh, for 2014, and we decided to do trash act with our eco-delegate students, which are um, school, uh, students representing each class of our schools. And so we decided as we were in uh, online classes, because we, we were confined here in Portugal, we decided to do it in a digital way. So we created this Padlet, which is a digital wall in which uh, everyone can um, add their own trash act. And then when we returned home uh, from, from home to school in early April, I decided to challenge all my students to put uh, to add an individual trash act to this padlet. And we also invited schools from other countries to uh, also uh, add their own trash acts over here. So we have trash acts from Portugal, from Lebanon, from Greece, from Canada and from Nigeria. Thanks, Sandra. It's such an interesting way of sharing trash hacks online and during this very interesting time. Um, what are some, now Mathilde, what are some of the waste issues that you noticed in your area that inspired you to trash hack? In the area that I live, uh, mainly in the summer, because the towers, the plastic container is full and they were falling and some flies and I found many plastics in my garden and the sea. And what are some of the ways, Josefina, that you and your family already take action against waste? Well, uh, my family and I try to reduce every day to reduce plastic in our life. So now because of the, uh, of the pandemic, we need to protect us with masks. So instead of wearing surgery masks, we use, uh, uh, we use cloth masks because they're much more friendly. And uh, at home and uh, everywhere, we also uh, recycle. We have reusable bags where the plastic goes. And to throw the organic waste away, we reuse the plastic bags from the fruits uh, from the grocery shop. Thank you, Josefina. And I noticed that you shared a lot of these trash hacks uh, yes. on the Padlet with these schools from different countries around the world, which was excellent to see. Um, 
Now, Sandra, what are some of the um, exciting actions that were taken by students involved? Uh, there, were, there were very simple actions that students showed us. And in fact, that we can all do. Uh, some of them were already um, uh, talked about here uh, today, but there were um, a very nice one. Some parents from one of our elementary schools, uh, they decided to count all the plastics they um, can gather at their home during three weeks. And they were astonished <laughs> with the amount of plastic they had. And the, they decided to reduce it because, in fact, we don't, you, we don't need that much plastic in our lives. Another uh, great idea, which was from a colleague of these girls from their class, was the use of pencils. Because, in fact, if we all use a pencil instead of a pen, we can all reduce uh, the plastic in uh, our everyday lives, and it's much nicer. One other example came from a student from Lebanon, which is creating a fabric mask from a sock. You can see the video in the Padlet if you want to. Fantastic. Um, and Mathilde, what did you learn from the Padlet? Uh, with this project, I learned more about the, plas uh, the plastic and uh, reduce the plastic, uh, more about uh, the, the plastic warm to our planet and uh, do crazy things with the plastic. And Josefina, how did it feel to uh, could be get together with lots of other students from around the world and rethink waste. Yes, well, it made me think how important this subject is and how many people are interested in helping and stopping plastic pollution or at least changing it uh, to better the environment. For sure. I mean, I think that we all know that trash connects us in so many ways. When we throw something out here in Paris, it could end up anywhere in the world. Uh, so I think it's amazing to connect across the world to actually uh, rethink waste as well. It's so exciting. And Sandra, is it important to find creative ways to celebrate work even when learning remotely? Especially when you are on, on online classes, it's very important to have um, different and creative ways of working with students. And in fact, uh, to engage them and to challenge them, it's very important because it's the, their way of learning, making something by their own. So it's very important. And finally, as we've been saying that we're going to take some uh, messages to policymakers next week at the UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. Um, Mathilde, why do you think it's important to learn for our planet? I think it's important to learn more about our planet, to discover new ways to help it, and the living beings that live on it, such as marine and land animals, insects, plants, and even us. Yes. Also, I think it's important to learn about our planet because I don't want to only destroy it because of the specific material. Also, because I think it is a wonderful planet and it should stay it like that. Mm -hmm. And it is also my home and not uh, only my home, it's also from other living beings. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. And I encourage everybody else to continue to submit their uh, reasons why they want to learn for our planet in the uh, Mentimeter with the chat in the link, the link in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you all. Um, and we are actually going to stay in Portugal now, Portugal now. Um, to show you another excellent example of a video made for the YRE Trash Hack campaign. Um, we go now to Escola Profesional Amar Terra Verde uh, to meet Clara, Caterina, Sergio and Tiago. Um, hi all, can you quickly introduce yourselves, your trash hack and the video we're about to see? Hello, I am uh, Clara Souza. I am the teacher um, that accompanies the group that made the video. I am an English and Portuguese teacher and I'm also a member of the um, Eco Schools Council here at uh, the school. So we are used to dealing with these questions and working in pro of the environment. With me, I have uh, 
some of the students that were directly linked to, to the making of the video. I have here with me the girl that entered the video and if she's going to present herself, if you don't mind. Hello. My name is Katarina uh, I am a student and uh, I'm uh, currently uh, attending uh, the first year of a uh, vocational course in uh, sociocultural animation. And now the other two are presenting themselves also. Sergio and Tiago. Hello, my name is Serge. I'm from Portugal. I'm studying and uh, currently attending the first year of vocational course in multimedia. Um, hello, my name is Tiago Silva. I'm also from Portugal. I'm a student and I'm also attending the first year of vocational course in multimedia. Thank you. Okay. Also. Uh, yes, Tiago is uh, answering all the questions because uh, Sergio and Katarina doesn't, don't speak English very well, so we will speak in behalf of them. Thank you very much, Clara, and thank you um, to your entire team. I think we're going to show your video now, if that's okay, <laughs> and we would love to share it with the world. What an excellent video, it's so inspiring and, and such, a, such a beautiful way to um, trash hack. Um, Julie, thank you very much to all of the team in Portugal. I think it's, uh, we're going back to you now to, to head around the world. Thank you, Lily, for moderating this beautiful session. Um, so many interesting examples and including uh, this video that just we watched. I think that uh, his students have in imagination and even promote through their visual art about this trash hacks. Great example. Thank you so much. Uh, now let's move uh, to our next panel discussion and to hear about a trash hack from a school in India. Uh, Gosia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Julie, and thank you, UNESCO, for organizing this fantastic webinar. It's so much, uh, um, it's so many interesting stories and examples that we can learn from, and so inspiring and like heartwarming as well to see it. And uh, I, uh, I'm Małgorzata Uszczek, Gosia. I'm a director of uh, uh, Young Reporters for the Environment from Foundation for Environmental Education. I'm sorry, there is a like small error in the in the slide here. Uh, and I have a pleasure to moderate this session uh, together with uh, a school from Delhi Public School uh, from India, uh, Jamnagar, uh, with a teacher from the school, Ms. Swati, and with a small student, Shif Faliya, who will be our speakers today. And I would like to ask both of you to introduce yourself. Uh, Ms. Swati, can you say a few words about yourself and the school? Hello everyone present here. It is a pleasure to be a part of this webinar. I am Swati. I'm working with Delhi Public School Jamnagar, Gujarat, India. I'm a mother teacher and a primary coordinator and also associated with Eco School Program. The main aim of forming this Eco Club was to bring children close to nature. This will enable children to develop a relationship and bond with the mother nature. Here we try to make them understand and sensitize the importance of ecosystem and broadly about the nature. 
This is done by engaging uh, with many activities like Little S campaign, which was initiated by Eco School and Waste Management, in which teachers and students, both of them collaboratively highlighted the major concerns happening ecologically balanced and sustainable development. Thank you so much, Ms. Swati. And Shiv, can you please say hello to us? Good evening, everyone. Dear all, I am. My name is Shufalia. I am. I am seven years old. I am. I am studying in the Grade Two Delhi Public School, Jamnagar. I feel uh, we should try to make the world a better place to live by taking small steps. Awareness as as individual as a student, we can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are so sweet and uh, fantastic, um, showing us fantastic approach for the youngest uh, participants of the Trash Hack campaign. And uh, I would like to come back to Ms. Swati. And uh, uh, Ms. Swati, you highlighted that you are already participating in the Little Less campaign. Uh, can you uh, briefly uh, ex um, present uh, through your uh, point of view, what was the biggest uh, waste issues in your area? So, ma'am, in this pandemic situation last year, after taking a survey, we have observed that our local surrounding, the biggest concern appears to be a plastic waste and its management. The major plastic waste generated from our own household waste was due to many reasons like lack of knowledge, how plastic is creating hindrance in our nature. As an educator and with this trash hack campaign, we try to create, a, a create an awareness among our young eco buddies about the biggest hazard created by plastics. We at our own level tried uh, to reduce, recycle and reuse the plastic waste. The worst part in this plastic waste was that which we cannot decompose it and it was actually creating a landfills and it was a main hindrance to our own self and all the uh, animals and uh, different ecological and it was, uh, it was a big hindrance in ecological dif uh, difference. So in our area, the major uh, plastic waste management was a very distant dream. Therefore, we as an educator took this as a prime challenge uh, by various, doing by various projects and how to deal with this plastic waste management. Thank you so much. And meantime, on the screen, we can see also photo story from uh, your school uh, presenting different activities and uh, achievements uh, uh, by students to reusing uh, plastic and other products as part of the Trash Hack campaign. And Shiv, can you tell us a few words what activities you were taking during the Trash Hack campaign? It was a great experience to participate in the trash hack campaign, my friends used old tires to make sitting for their terrace garden. We used cans as pots to plants. I made a bar feeder out of this plastic bottle. We made pencil holders and decorative items from waste like CDs, cans, bottles, etc. We have learned to lead a zero waste to restore Mother Earth and reuse using waste generated foods is the need of our and have our pledge to be little Recorder buddy, thank you. Thank you so much, Shiv. It's uh, such a heartwarming in, uh, uh, to see that uh, such a small student like you is taking uh, so much and doing so much for the environment and protecting our earth. So thank, thank you, you so much, much for, for, for your activities and all the uh, schoolmates from your class and the whole school. Ms. Swati, I would like to ask you yet, 
Oh, this is your pro uh, the thing that you produce. Oh, that's wonderful. Please show it. And what do you have also there? It's this a, it's is a bar feeder. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for showing at this amazing work. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Ms. Swati, can you also tell us, like from your experience as a teacher, what was the main learning from all these activities? See, ma'am, as in uh, we have given them, all our young learners, we have given them a tag, like being an eco buddies. And they have learned that their moral duty is to develop environmental sensitivity. This actually brought a chance to overthought about what is actually happening. The need of an R is saving the environment and sustainable development. We also believe in reducing the maximum waste and upcycle the maximum waste generated from us. So in this pandemic situation, we have tried to lead and achieved zero plastic life uh, and creating a tremendous adverse impact on Earth. We segregated waste at our own home and ensured that we how we can contribute from our end. We have actually created eco bricks, the compost input gardens, like Shiv has already told us, we have how we have created uh, plastic and actually they have learned. The students were coming and telling us, Ki, yes, ma'am, how we can reuse and we can recycle the plastic now and we can reuse it in our own houses. That's so uh, inspiring also to show that all the activities that you were running were also taken to the homes by students and uh, introduced and the families also uh, were educated through these activities. As we all know, this campaign was run during the pandemic time. And I would like to ask you as well, was it the opportunity or how did you celebrate uh, the achievements from the Trash Hack campaign? Uh, when we have started this campaign, ma'am, all the uh, students which were involved in this eco club, they wholeheartedly participated and they were enthusiastically coming with their own ideas, their own trash hack. So we try to encourage them. We try to encourage and participate them not only in their own houses, but in the society also. And they have contrib contributed a lot of things to protect our nature and mankind. So this campaign, which was launched by our school, where students distributed eco bags to the local people at the vegetable market, just to sensitize them. What is the ill effect of plastic and how we can stop? The main aim, how to spread, uh, how to celebrate this campaign was to spread the awareness. That, that's a really great approach because then many people can also do some practical activities when they receive uh, bags and they can use them for their shoppings. And uh, just the last question uh, before we will give uh, voice again to Julie. Uh, for, from your perspective as an eco schools teacher, what would be the learning for planet message for the policymakers? Uh, Ma'am, as our own father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi, well, very well said that nature has enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. In order to spread the, this message, this mass awareness regarding how to minimize the plastic usage, uh, we can just adopt the policy, each one teach one. And we have to just restrict our lifestyle how we can just reinculcate all the things, whatever we are learning in our normal day-to-day -day life, and we can stop this ill practice. Thank you so much. I think that this is fantastic summary and highlighting that uh, the, the improvements of the world activities depends from each of us, and each of us has to take some actions, and then we can uh, make the big impact for the environment. Thank you so much, Ms. Swati and Shiva. You were really wonderful. So thank you so much. And Julie, the floor is yours. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Gosha, um, for taking us through this wonderful examples in India. Uh, thank you, uh, Swati and uh, Shiva. Um, it, it's great uh, to see that how young people, young children can also contribute to even um, changing the society, the, the, the change of the mentality of the adults. So very, very inspiring. Thank you very much. And now I'd um, like to invite our last panelists uh, for today who are from Mexico. And, uh, and I would like to invite my colleague, Julia, 
to take the floor. But before uh, passing the ball to Julia, uh, this session will be conducted in Spanish. So therefore, uh, those who don't understand Spanish, please make sure that you will have the button uh, on interpretation, which is find uh, on the icon more, you click, and there's a button interpretation, and please click English. Otherwise, you, you will just hear Spanish. Thank you very much. Or, of course, you can choose French as well. Uh, so, Julia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Julie. My name is Julia Sessiana. I'm a consultant for education for sustainable development for UNESCO. And today I'm going to be going to see what's happened at the Colegio Latino in Mexico. So I'd like to give the floor to Jose, the teacher, so he can present the work done. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me to this seminar. I am Jose Manuel Vasquez from the Colegio Latino um, School in Mexico. As a teacher, I teach basic um, Spanish in the school. And we have also set up a class under the title of Trash Hag, or also um, it has the name of Sustainable um, Gardens. And so we're going to show you what we've done today with urban gardens. Hello, my name is Marisol and I'm in sixth grade and I'm here today to speak to you about the um, Sustainable um, Vegetable Gardens project in favour of sustainability. My name is Jonathan Fernandez, I'm also in sixth grade and I really liked participating in this trash hack so that we could raise awareness amongst other people regarding the environment. Well, thank you very much for your presentations and thank you for being with us today. So now we're going to see the video of your trash hack. So please can we put the video on so we can see exactly what you what you did. Genial. Great stuff. A great video. Now I'd like to ask a question to the two students, Marisol and Jonathan. How did you um, launch this project in your community? Well, in our community, we have a lot of waste in our parks and in our um, green spaces and also in the spaces where we do sport and this can really cause problems especially when it's a uh, rainy season now often people don't know what kind of use other uses this waste can have and so this um, trash builds up and this can lead to flooding in fact yes this can even um, lead this pollution can even be found in rivers and other, um, other parts of the water system. So we, we try to deal with this um, waste. Now, looking at the way that people were not, um, looking at the way that people were polluting the rivers, people seem to forget that rivers could also be something that could be a source of food, but also be a source of tourism too. So, we set up a project focusing specifically on these rivers. Well, thank you 
you very much for speaking about these issues in your community. Jose, as a school, how did you set up this um, project so that these students could set up these gardens and then communicate regarding what they were doing? Well, the, the trash hag is something that was written into our, the curriculum in our school in favour of the um, environment. So the trash hack actually gave us the opportunity to work on these sustainable vegetable patches. Given that in our um, school, we were able to actually create our own products, sustainable products. And this is a, now an activity that has become somewhat of a tradition in our school. It also helps us in terms of scientific teaching regarding um, how to make the most of our resources. It's also a source of motivation and a source of opportunity for sustainability for the whole of our community so that we can continue to make the most of everything that is given to us by the environment. Thank you very much for explaining uh, to us how this project was actually set up. Now, Marisol, tell us a little bit about your own experience with these um, vegetable patch, with these vegetable gardens. Well, in the um, trash hack, I understood that if we actually can set up something like a vegetable garden, then we can fight against waste and also raise awareness within our own communities. And me with my family, for example. We were very enthusiastic about these project, projects because we worked on them together. And I also learned exactly what everything, just, just everything that, that, that our earth can give us. Now, something that was extremely um, valuable for me in this was to be able to work alongside my classmates. We were able to come, we were able to blend history, sport, sciences and physical education all within one project. Well, thank you very much for letting us know everything you learned during this project. And this is, of course, a way of celebrating your achievements with other... You celebrated your achievements with your other students. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, Marisol? Well, yes, we always try and share what we're doing in terms of looking at the environment with our, with our classmates and with children from other schools, too. All of this focusing on the um, Sustainable Development Goals. So... We raised awareness regarding the problem of waste and how to deal with it. We actually have a radio program where students were able to um, raise awareness regarding fighting against plastic waste and promoting sustainability. And this was a way of showing everything that we learned through the trash hack. This meant that the majority of students within the in, in our school were focused on waste management and we're also able to set up projects focusing on plastic but not only plastic also compost um, using eggshells and also insecticides thank you very much and finally what would the message be for political decision makers Jonathan why do you believe it's important that the student learns to take care of the planet and learns about their planet. Well, it's because this is, the planet is our, is our home and there's only one, we only have one planet. So we have to make sure that we um, can make the most of our rivers and our beaches, etc., but also with us, while always respecting the environment. We have to make sure that we um, are aware so that we can be happy. And this can be done through projects like Trash Hack. We have to protect our um, environment and raise awareness about it. We are a generation that can really change climate change through our actions.
so that our children can have a better world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And it's also very important for us to hear just how committed such young students are. And Jose, as a teacher, how do you think education needs to change? Well, for us it's very important that in our families, from amongst our pupils and in our school, really do see the importance of um, environmental education. And therefore, we can get children involved at a very early age so that they understand the relationship that they have with the environment. Teaching young people how to respect the environment and how to take care of it. This is really a multidisciplinary issue. And this can be taught through early arts, through mathematics, um, life sciences and also sport. Now our students can then learn the basics when it comes to the environment. And they can also, as has been done in this case, set up projects that can actually benefit their whole communities. They're actually dealing with real problems that affect their, um, their surroundings, their env own environment. And this can help them have a better relationship with the environment. Thank you very much. Jose, and thank you, Jonathan and Marisol. It was a pleasure to listen. It was a pleasure to listen to you. And now I will give the floor back to Julie. Thank you, Julia, um, and Jose, Jonathan, and uh, oh, sorry, Jose, Jonathan, and Marisol, for sharing these great ideas and actions uh, taking place um, in, in Mexico and how you connect with your peers, but also with the society. Thank you so much. We have seen a wealth of experiences and learnings from different countries. Thank you again for uh, sharing them with us and for inspiring and motivating us all. If you would like to have another look at the video from today and uh, from the many other schools who have been submitted uh, their trash hacks to us over the past months, please visit the Trash Hack website and the school's page. I would like to take a moment here to thank all of the schools across the world who have been trash hacking and shown to be companions and examples to us, our communities and the world that can um, make a difference. Please continue to trash hack and send us your photos and videos. We will continue to share them via our website. Let's now move into our last session before um, we close the event. I would like to invite my colleague Lily once more to take the floor. Lily. Thanks, Julie, and thank you to all of our speakers who've been sharing their fabulous trash hacks and their thoughts about why it's important that we all learn for our planet. Ahead of the World Conference next week, we want to share as many students and teachers' thoughts from around the world as to why you love learning for our planet, why you think it's important, and how you wish education would change. So if you haven't already, head to the Mentimeter and share, share your thoughts, your name, and where you're from. And I'll be reading out some of the results at the end of this segment. Now to help me present these, I'd like to reintroduce Rajwa to you. You may remember Rajwa from the Trash Hack webinar launch. Um, hi Rajwa. Hello, hello everyone. Let me reintroduce myself. My name is Rajwa, I'm from Indonesia and I'm 16 years old. Well, in Indonesia itself, many young people still don't understand the importance of saving the planet or how trash can make disasters. Climate change affected places in Indonesia that used to be safe zoned and flow started to flood and even landslide. People have started to create environmental movement towards those issues but it's still a challenge to make these behaviors become our lifestyle. Education must take a big role in changing our lifestyles because like many education system out there, it can be said that in Indonesia, knowledge of sustainable development is thought as theory sticking in our head, but it still really is a way of life. Very true and so good to have you back for this webinar, Rajwa. Rajwa is going to join us at the World Conference next week to share some of these messages that you send and your passion with policymakers. 
Um, and we'll be taking why we want to learn for our planet to the World Conference next week. People have been submitting their ideas on why we think it's important to learn for our planet in the sign up to this webinar. Could you share with us some of their responses, Rajwa? Of course. So, why do we need to learn for our planet? Let's start with Daniel from Denmark. The future of all living things depends on our knowledge, understanding, and action. Jose from Mexico also stated that we need to learn for our planet because it is necessary to give back to the planet a little of everything it has given us. Next one. Shara from Nigeria said she wanted to be a part of those that will lead the campaign in protecting the environment. Rosie from Thailand said, so, through the knowledge we gain, we can become and empower others to be agents of change, however small. If we don't have education, we would never be able to understand that everything on earth isn't replaceable, said Katuna from Turkey. And lastly, Alan from Ghana commented, we need to learn for our planet to empower us to make the right choices for a resilient planet Thank you so much for that, Rajva, and to all who submitted and are submitting during the Met through the Menti. Rajva, why do you think it's important that we learn for our planet? Well, I believe we need to learn for our planet because it's the home we need to respond to. The planet has provided us a place to live. Well, now it's our turn to be responsible for every action we've taken against this planet. Being ignorant of our planet means killing our future home. Accordingly, we need to increase our knowledge of sustainable development to bring back our beloved planet Earth. If it's not us, then who else? Let's together take roles and change for our Earth, or we can say our home. Thank you so much, Rajva. Now, Eric, can we head to the Mentimeter and I'll read out yeah. some of the results of this that we've been seeing throughout the, uh, the last few sessions. So um, I saw one that said from Sueli Matos from Brazil, the planet is our mother home. It offers us with all the resources to live in balance. Taking care of him is taking care each of each and every generation. Maria from Italy says, learning what we can do to save our planet enables our young students to develop knowledge, skills, values, and motivation for action, allowing them to maintain their own well-being. We had Seren from Turkey say, as we learn, we beginning, begin to see facts. If we, don't, if we see facts, we act. The more we act, the more our voices are heard, which I think is very true and it's very clear from this webinar today that so many actions and so many voices are happening all around the world. Ms. Rayan Atea from Lebanon says, our survival as a humankind depends on awareness when it comes to learning for our planet. And we have so many other great uh, responses coming through on the Mentimeter. And it's really, truly inspiring to see all of these. We want you to continue to submit these on the Mentimeter and through social media using hashtag learn for our planet in the next week. And we will be sharing your passion with policymakers next week at the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. I think it's clear from this wonderful project that so many people around the world are ready to take action to change education and change the world. And we're really excited to see what happens in this next decade of education for sustainable development kicking off next week. Thanks, Julie. Back to you. And thank you, Rajwa. Thank you, Lily. And thanks, ladies and Rajwa, again. Um, I would now like to give the floor to my colleague, Alexander Leicht, Chief of the Section for Education for Sustainable Development, and to provide the closing remarks. Alexander, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Julie. Um, thanks. Um, uh, hello, hello to everyone, uh, uh, all panelists, all participants. Um, my role is really just to to say a few closing remarks and thank you all for the for the wonderful contributions and and, and also the wonderful uh, the wonderful event and the wonderful sharing of all your your practices. Um, it was um, has been very great to see this collaboration between UNESCO and the Foundation of Environmental Education, which is really one of our main partners in education for sustainable development, and that this collaboration has generated so many 
exciting initiatives and so many exciting concrete uh, actions. We're very happy to bring this community together and to see schools around the world becoming really very, very concrete about addressing uh, environmental protection and sustainable development. We've seen many really exciting examples from Bahrain, Ghana, Portugal, India, and Mexico, and they were really uh, inspiring. I want to really congratulate you, congratulate you all, uh, students, teachers, anyone else who was involved in in making making really these practical uh, examples, um, which were really just examples from from hundreds of schools in sixty countries who have sent images and videos and and, and their concrete uh, work. Uh, I think the trash hack campaign really that we have been running for a while is a really great example of of education that really not only tells us sort of um, what the facts are about the world, but really tells us how to act and tells us to become really really concrete in our everyday uh, lives. Um, the whole campaign trash hack uh, it. it uh, was able, it has been able for UNESCO only to run this campaign uh, thanks to the support of the government of Japan, which has provided us with the, with the financial support and is also generally one of the great global promoters of education for sustainable development. So we're very happy about this, um, this partnership and the concrete contribution that was uh, made, made the trash hack uh, possible. Uh, and we are now as Julie and Lily, and as Lily have said, we're very much looking forward to sharing all the exciting messages from 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 uh, from Trash Hack at the UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development that will take place uh, uh, next week, and that will bring together many policymakers, ministers, and other and other policymakers, and that really will make the point about how important it is to learn for our for our planet. Um, we um, have one more contribution. We have one more ending. Uh, to the event today, um, and let's and, and and because of that, I'd like to introduce Samar Abdel Jalil and Patrice Boyou from the Lycée Nar Ibrahim in Lebanon, um, who, despite the, the the recent COVID-19 school lockdown, have managed to to engage their pre-primary student uh, in exciting activities, exciting trash hacking activities in their home, um, and the many beautiful music instruments um, uh, that are the outcome from from that. So, Samara and Patrice. Um, uh, I'll hand over to you and thank uh, again everyone who participated. Thank you. Thank you. I can't see the video and so I'm not able to put up my photograph. I'm Samar Abdel Jalil. I'm from the French Lebanese Lycée with my colleague Patrice Bouillot. This is a school that is 20 kilometers from Beirut. It is a part of the Mission Laïque Française, which is non-denominational association in 45 countries, which promotes non-denominational education and culture. Uh, so our approach uh, to education is about sustainable uh, development uh, and goes back to what we did in January. We picked up on some of your suggestions uh, to promote culture for sustainable development. And above all, we wanted to give people hope, given that our situation is difficult in Lebanon, economically, politically, socially, and health-wise. So, so we have been doing distance learning for most of the year with the support of all our colleagues and the school community and the intention was to run activities that would be possible in a distance learning format so we tackled six challenges we put these challenges to our pupils with respect to the various aspects of sustainable development it was about how to limit consumption, how to say no to plastic, reduce waste, and tag the environment uh, so as to protect it. All sorts of different challenges. And you will see this with my colleague Patrice. Uh, we had a project uh, about recycling to music. Uh, so you'll see what that means. Uh, but I don't want to finish without thanking all the school communities that have contributed to these various projects. Uh, teachers, pupils, steering committees, 
everybody. Without their support, uh, we would not have been able to complete this project. So let me also thank, on behalf of uh, our school, uh, UNESCO, for the support that they have given us. Patrice, over to you. Oui. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Patrice Bouillot. So I teach in a kindergarten, children between three and six years. I'd like to thank UNESCO for giving us this unique opportunity to report on their work. In August 2020, an ESD, an Environmental Protection module, was added to the syllabus of our school. No, kindergarten starts at three. And the idea was to teach them about environmental protection. But fortunately, uh, because of the health situation, we had to rethink the original project uh, uh, because uh, very few people have actually been able to attend uh, school. There was a strict lockdown, so we had to change our approach. And we had to think about what sort of format we could use or what material could be used, because teachers couldn't leave home and non-essential shops were closed. So we decided to, to manufacture or produce objects using waste, uh, household waste. If I can see the next slide, please. So here you have an example. So people use cardboard, paper, wood. And the golden rule was throw nothing away. The idea was to produce musical instruments. Previously, we had worked on the music itself uh, using Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, and they decided to use things like maracas or guitars, as you can see here. Next slide, please. So there's the guitar. <laughs> So this is about learning to play chords on a guitar, putting your fingers in the right place. As you can see, these are very young children, four to six, and this is just the first step towards more ambitious projects that they'll have in the rest of their syllabus as they go through school. And at the end of the day, the fact that this was a home-based project. Voilà, je vais te regarder les réalisations. So this is what the kids can do by way of performance. I think you can hear it. Voilà, le fait... The fact that this is a home-based project was a double-edged sword because the families were deeply involved in the kids' activities, and it changed their vision and appreciation of waste. Next slide, please, sir. Uh, so it's up to everybody to help protect the environment, even the youngest. Yes, this is very important. To It's very important to protect our environment and use waste items to produce something new. Merci. Thank you very much. Next one. Hello, everyone. Look at how you can make a piano with a shoebox. That's what I used. I used one of my mother's old shoeboxes, and I produced a piano with it. I've put the notes on the top. To do this, I used a felt tip pen, a marker, and then I pulled out a little bit to make the keys and colored them in black. Yes, as I was saying, it's everyone's duty to protect the planet, starting from the youngest age, because it's their right to have a clean planet, and therefore, for the older generation, it's our duty to leave them with a habitable planet, an environment. Uh, and this has changed the way we look at education and teaching. 
the question is now, what do we do when we go back to school, when we have physical presence, or what sort of materials will I be buying for my class, or what will I do? Or will I buy a plastic pen like this, or perhaps a wooden crayon? And the plastic pen won't even last a whole year. This has led us to rethink our approach involving the children in this whole process. So that's the end of my presentation. Let me thank UNESCO once again for giving us this platform. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, uh, Sama and Patrice. Merci à vous. Thank you all very much. Uh, beautiful sort of a, um, gave us the examples of creating such a, a nice um, a musical instruments with um, everything around us. So, and I think it's wonderful uh, practice that you showed us that ra awareness raising can be done with our daily lives. Any uh, um, uh, uh, you know garbage and how to uh, take care of uh, the others, uh, you know, to, to understand the planet and so on. So it's a really wonderful presentation. Thank you so much and very inspirational and heartwarming note. I would like to now uh, thank you all uh, for participating um, in today's uh, webinar. And I would also, of course, uh, love to um, thank again the Foundation for Environmental Education the teachers, students from around the world, and also um, my team from ASP.NET and ESD colleagues, and of course, interpreters. Thank you very much for your beautiful work, without which we could have not followed the session so interesting and inspiringly. Now um, we say goodbye and stay safe and stay connected, and let's stay continue trash hacking. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Gracias. Merci Thank beaucoup. You. Muchas gracias, Mose. Bye, Thank you for having us. Bye. 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 Merci. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Can we have some maybe screenshots if possible? Gallery shots. Can someone take nice photos of everyone? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll do it, Julie. Yeah, thank you so much. I take one. Um, I take one nice screenshot. Yeah, great. Let's have everyone sort of on everybody. Thank you so much for your beautiful presentations. Very inspirational, inspiring remarks. Thank you, moderators, for making nice uh, sessions. Huh? And thank you, my colleagues, ESD staffs, ASP Dev staffs. Thank you so much. And the technical support from CLD. Thank you so much. And the interpreters. Thank you. Simon, it's okay. You took nice photos. For all of yes, us? I, yes, okay. I got two nice shots. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We'll now end the meeting. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Recording stopped. Hello, Julie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, maybe UNESCO staff uh, could um, 